friends. Good to see you. Good to see you, mate. Sorry about my throat. It's a bit of trench throat from this week's parliament. <laughs> oh, a few issues with speed cameras. Well, t- t- tonight is courage and strength, and it's all about um, overcoming difficult circumstances despite conditions that are not ideal. So first of all, I know that you're not feeling the greatest, so... I really appreciate you coming out tonight. Uh, you, you could have pulled the pin, but you didn't. You're here today. So first of all, thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Stephen Andrew. Now, I think of many members of the public, what strikes them when they meet their local member, member of parliament, there seems to be a little bit of a, of a disconnect. Yet when I spoke to you the first time, I felt like I was speaking to a real human being. I could have been somebody that lived down my street. I did not feel a barrier that I sometimes feel with other members of parliament. Would you mind talking a little bit about that? Have you, and how has parliament not managed to change you? Because that's what it appears to me. Well, well firstly, most members of parliament don't like being held to account. Number one. Number two is I swore an oath to the people and I plan on keeping it. Hear, hear. The situation with people and the way that... I sound like Ian McFarlane, actually. You could probably go to the Resources Resources Council, eh? Yeah. I won't go into that. Um, (laughs) The situation with me is, is like, we really have to represent the people and, and the parliament and all who we are. Oh, is no good me being your representative if you can't speak to me. If you can't understand me and I can't understand you. There is absolutely no point in being a representative. If you're going in there as a representative for a major party or for other business ideals or a situation where it's nefarious or anything else, then the true term or true situation that you've actually been there is a lie to the people and you should not be there. You should actually resign and get out of there and let someone who's not a pretender go in there and do the job for the people. I'd like to ask you, was politics something always on your radar? When did you think about the idea of serving the people? And what was it that, say, either inspired you, nudged you, or pushed you to take that step? So, my history and background. I'm an Australian South Sea Islander, and a proud one, and the first one that's ever been in Queensland Parliament. My great-great-grandmother was stolen off the islands in Vanuatu when she was 15 as a domestic to come and work in the cane fields. So we know a little bit about slavery and oppression and all the rest of it, right? So there's nothing better than someone to come in and actually have a different look and a different understanding about things. But in 2007, Grandad came to me and said, we've been approached by the Labor Party. Uh, Kevin Rudd's going to come and visit. and We want to meet at your house. Um... That day was a really interesting day. We had 60 minutes there and I remember my daughter was just born. She was only six months old. Liz Hayes was holding her actually. And uh, we were doing a, doing a bit of an interview there. And Grandad was looking at me in a funny way. He'd, he was actually sitting at the table with Kevin Rudd. And I heard Grandad look at, look at Kevin and look over to me and said, you know, Kevin, he said, now that I've met you, I'll never vote Labor again. He said, because you don't represent anyone. You don't represent the people. You haven't done a day's work in your life. (laughs) Granddad was 96 years old at that time. He cut cane when he was last, last cut cane when he was 75. And mate, that guy could pull a cane knife. He reckons to me after he talked to Kevin, Kevin could not cut cut enough cane to put sugar in his tea. Right? That's how, I, that's how I grew up. And Grandad took, took to me afterwards, because he's like me, very fair dinkum. I've, I've got a lot of spin-off from him because I grew up with him and I loved him. I never heard him talk bad about anyone. But what he did do was stood up for a fair go. What he did do was make sure that anyone was there, never went without, and everyone got looked after, and everyone got a fair go. Because in the old days, they wouldn't sell cane farms to blackfellas. They wouldn't do it. Because to take away the labour and all the rest of it. So we, we put up with it. But he said to me, you're the last one of us left now, Steve. That's got it in you. Go in there and sort it out. And I've been in there since 2017. I hardly had a grey hair before I started it too, Morgan, by the way. Um, but I'll tell you what, was it doesn't matter whether my hair's gone grey or my voice is gone, I don't give up, mate. And no one here should either. 
I love that. And, and thank you for sharing that personal account with us. And you're in Parliament, you're serving. I watch your video. So personally, I'd like to thank you for standing up as well. And even th though I'm from Victoria, I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, we're all one country and we need to be united every step of the way. Thank you. What, if anything, has either taken you off guard or surprised you about your duration in Parliament? I think the main thing is the duplicit nature of people that are supposed to represent their own people, but they don't. It is a sad indictment that those people will go in there with the hubris and, and, and you know, the arrogance and say that they know what's better for people than the people themselves. No way in the world will I ever stand by and let that stuff happen. I, I had a situation one time where I'm on the hospital committee and on the legal affairs committee and I punch pretty hard above my weight. I don't give them an inch. You know, I look at all of the different stuff that we have to from the witnesses and we give them everything that we can to make sure that we keep the legal part of it or at least the, the fairness and balance in some sort of check. The situation that happened one time with me, an old lady was dying from emphysema and the hospital said, oh, look, lady, someone said you've had a smoke and we're never going to let you take oxygen home to live out the last part of your life. I went into the hospital and said, I'm going to take these two bits, of, these two canisters of oxygen and two masks and I'm going to take them out to this lady. You can sign me up for them. I don't care whether you get the cops to pick me up, do whatever you want. I'm responsible for them. I'll write it down. I said, but that person will never die without dignity and to be able to talk to her family. Hear, hear. And these are the things that you've got to do when you're in parliament. You've got to lead by example. That's the only way you win. If you don't, if you're just one of the others, if you just want to stand back and sit back and think it's all going to be good, well, it's not. Because you imagine to be that family, you imagine to be that lady not being able to talk to grandkids. And her voice is just important as all of our voices going forward today. And someone has to enable it. No different to what I did that day, right? Make sure you understand that. It's very important. I could have stood back and sat back and said, oh, no, I'll just let that ride. Don't do it. Walk up and say, I'll take responsibility for it. I'll walk in and I'll make it right. Hear, hear. <laughs> now, Stephen, you've made mention of, unfortunately, some of your parliamentary colleagues not being there for the right reasons, not being there to serve the people. I will presume serving most likely their own self-interest, at least many of them, not all. What needs to happen for more people who genuinely love this country, who love their communities, who want to do the right thing to be elected to parliament? How do we start changing the tide here? It's all small things. You know, Queensland's a really unique place during, during the fact it's a unicameral parliament with no upper house. Well, we, it was abolished in 1922, right? The Labor Party fell on their swords. It's a long story. You can read about it. Love it or hate it, that's where we sit. Scotland's the same as well, and the rot's creeping in there as well. Some sort of overlay that just brings in all these laws to, to black you out, to take away all your freedom and your freedom of speech. So, yeah, we have to concentrate on the small things. The small things are what makes a change. Because you can only, if you look at the small things and you tell people, you show people and say, they can't manage that, mate. They can't manage these little things. So how are they going to manage us? And you just keep dropping that drips of water on that one point and making that hole in their armour and showing people, showing people how much debt's gone out of control. We did Mount Morgan Water two years ago, 40.5 million. Now, one year later, actually, it's sorry, it was in the budget for two years, but now one year later, it's 84.5 million. Do you see what I'm saying? When we, pe we bring people in there and show them, who's going to shoulder the debt? Who's going to keep going on with this? So these are the things that we need to keep looking at and also appeal on people's good nature to say, we need other people to come in and make the difference. Look at what we're getting here. There's no value for money. That's the people's house and the people can't be in it because it's been hijacked by all these fake people that are in there doing stuff for their own agenda. Being middlemen for corporations. That's what we are. We're, we're working as, a, as an in-between, go-between. That's not what the place is for. Let's bring it back to the people. 
And I'll tell you what, there's only two ways of doing it. That's voting them in or all standing out the front and never relinquishing until we walk out. At the moment, that's what we got. Until we get the right people. But once they know that we're in there, once they see the difference we make, they'll never, ever let it change again. We've just got to get there. My next question... Let's just say we have some people in the audience or people who watch the replay from this evening, regular Australians like you and I, they're thinking about throwing their hat in the ring, maybe local, state or federal, to, to take for a run for office. They're not too sure. What advice would you give to these people? Well, we're here. We've got a common denominator of freedom fighters, people that love their people, love humanity, over power and money. Now, you know, this is what we need to do. We've got us all together in one room and this, I believe that this shouldn't stop. It's, it's our the whole common denominator of what we got to help and support everyone that we can to get into Parliament. And that's what it's going to take. People are frightened to make that move. People think, like Renee said earlier, they haven't got it in. They got it in them all right. Because when you start seeing the injustice, when you start watching what it does to people, when it's cruel and all everyday Australians... And these people can stay in there and say, oh, but we're keeping you safe or we're stopping you from dying. It's rubbish. It's lies, right? Have a look at the money that they're taking off people. We can't in the cost of living crisis. And that's the other difference. We never want to get to a state where Napoleon Bonaparte said, there's never been a revolution for it on a full belly. We've got to do that before that happens. Australia is a fighters, mate. Back in the First World War, Every single war, we are the most revered fighting force in the world. Never forget it. Never let them take any... We didn't take it. They gave their last full measure to protect this country. We've got to start giving part of our last full measure. That's what it is. That's what it'll take. Hear, hear. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the one and only Stephen Andrew. Please make sure that you follow Stephen on social media, support him, especially come election times. We need to support the good ones, ladies and gentlemen. And good ones, we have no shortage of stock here tonight. No shortage of stock. Everybody here is good, and I'm very, uh, I'm very happy to be among you tonight, by the way. We're going to keep this show rolling along. We are moving towards an intermission to give you a bit of a break so you can top your drinks up and do what you need to do. Our next guest is somebody who's become a very good friend of mine. He's somebody that I respect. He's a former member of the Queensland Parliament. He's been out of the political business for a few years, but he's gotten back in the ring. He's still fighting. He's here for the people. I know that this man is here for a greater cause and a greater reason than himself. He's somebody that has been a tremendous support person for me with my, uh, my start in politics and what I've been building in Victoria. Please make him feel welcome, my friend, Steve Dixon. <laughs> 